Uh, I'm going to start with, and he's part of the Triple M commentary team now, Hoops. Um, Mitchell Pearce came back from France, um, has officially said he's retired, but that hasn't stopped clubs inquiring about whether or not Shock, he could come out of retirement and join the NRL again. Yeah, well, one of the big stories this week was the injuries to some of the star players in the game. So the Panthers obviously lost Nathan Cleary. Um, he'll be out for up to a month. And the big one for the Parramatta Reels who play in that Easter Monday blockbuster tomorrow against West Tigers was losing their halfback, Mitchell Moses, uh, to a busted foot. And he's going to be missing for three months. So off the back of that... Uh, people at the Eels have picked up the phone and directly rung Mitchell Pearce and just posed the question, look, you know, we've got a little bit of an issue here in the playmaking department at the moment. We know you played your last game in the Super League Grand Final for Catalans last year, but would you consider and, and would you be available? I think if he'd said yes, then there's a damn good chance Mitchell Pearce would have been wearing the Parramatta number seven jumper. Wow. But wow six, wait. six months since he's played his last game. That, yeah, but he's super fit though. He's, yeah, yeah the, the 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 super fit and you know the, there's getting accustomed. But six months without a, any contact. Let's not forget as well. Mitchell Pierce chose to retire. This wasn't imposed upon him. He had yeah. options to go round again yeah. last year. I'd be and, and also not just coming up to speed. You'd need probably a three four weeks of training. But also you go into the drug testing pool. But mm. like you've got to be in there for a. I think it's at least twenty eight days. And before you can play, before you can play, right. yeah, it happens okay. with a lot of a lot of fighters where they they yeah. have to, you know, uh, renege on their retirement and then they become active again, right? And then eligible for, for drug testing. So I don't think it's a case of uh, Paramount picking up the phone and saying, "Hey, Mitch, we, we, we've got some injury dramas here," and he's strapping up the boots two weeks. for, for mm-hmm. next week or, or two weeks yeah. later. There is a process to this. Okay. So, well, they uh, definitely made the inquiry. They definitely made the phone call. Yeah, they definitely yeah. made the inquiry, and they were mm. keen to try and get him in. Uh, and they're crazy not to as quickly as possible if they could. But as far as I understand it, M- Mitch has retired, and yeah. so he's he's not looking to come back and have one last swan song in the NRL. If I was the Titans as well, I would have been making the phone call. I think every club that's got issues the around dogs. the seven yeah, the uh, would mate, be, like, would be a lot making of sides the phone with, call to mate, with, To have someone's experience like that, we see Adam Reynolds, we see what Terry Evans, we watch those number sevens with a little bit more time under their belt, just steering sides around. Obviously, physically, could he be up to it? And that's what James is talking about, like the collision, right? Mitchell, Mitchell played hard, mate. As a number seven, he was a big body. Um, he was a great runner of the football, and he never shirked his job. He was a really tough player. He was a chip off the old block, actually. So, um, but there's no doubt. Would I love to see? Do you know what? There was a because there was a rumor that the Tigers even chased him. That that there would have been the romance mm. for me watching a Pierce back playing in the, you know, black and gold. But um, they did have a know? crack last year, Gordon. You're right. Yeah. The Tigers also made a phone call last year I think, and we're looking to bring him in in similar circumstances. I think for Mitch though you'd be you'd be mad to come back and play. Like he's gone over there, he's experienced life in Europe. He realized, you know, speaking to him, oh, how good is it that there's not as much scrutiny. There's not as much pressure. So he's left the game with a little bit of a feel good factor about it. And yeah. obviously, you know, he he lost that grand final for Catalans, but then you can imagine him coming back and the the, the the, the media scrutiny, the pressure, you know. Oh, it's the, a huge story. It would Lon. be a huge it, story. It, and it, just whether or not, it, it's not even the fact, like, could he cope with it? Absolutely, yes. But does he want, does he want to put himself and his family through that again? Like, I'd be, I'd be, am, I'd be amazed yeah, yeah. if yeah, he came absolutely. back. Yeah. No, and he's, he's had a great career. Like, Mitchell that's yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Absolutely. He's a great player. Yeah. And yep. then everybody, and then do you know what? Like, Phil Blake said to me one day, hey, mate, when you lose that, and he was pointing to me one day, I was 22. Because when you lose that, just retire. And it was, he was talking about the fire in your belly. So don't keep on thinking you can go on, f- you know, f- because of this and this and this. It's the fire in your belly. It's not the money. It's not this. It's not the. When you don't want to pay the price, don't play. The other thing that I find interesting about this, Gordy, is Dylan Brown will wear the number seven jumper for the Eels yep. tomorrow. Then they've got young Blaze Talangi, who is a half Blaze. and has come through predominantly as. A half in the Parramatta Juniors and Elite Pathways competition, uh, and then they got another good young half called Ethan Sanders as well, who is also in their top thirty-two. So that's why I, I just find, um, uh, I mean, Dylan is Brown's he, a New Zealand Test playmaker. Yeah, on his day, he's he, 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 he could be anything. 
is Sanders not a long term going to end up in Canberra? That was the you know up the round ten potentially. No, hoops. no, it's, was... it's round six, so yep. you, they can't. The Canberra Raiders can't formally table any official offer until after round six. Yeah. Uh, once that deadline passes, then they are allowed to. Yeah. And then it's up to the Eels whether they're prepared to let him go effective immediately or whether they want him to remain for the rest of this year and then they let him go for 2025. What, what Can we get an update on Zach Lomax? Last night, obviously, uh, he was part of a winning side. We will talk with Shane Flanagan a little later on this afternoon and just get his. But what's your mail? Is Zach still like likely to leave? And, and there are some sides... Another one has been mentioned as well, the Eels, lining up to try and gain his services. Well, it's a good thing we've got Flano coming on because we can just ask him directly. But certainly all the talk around the game over the course of the last week is that Flano said in an interview with us uh, on the Sunday Sinbin that they were going to revisit it after round four. So that deadline will now pass after this weekend. I think Zach will go in and tell the club or his management will go in and tell the club that his position hasn't changed. He'd still like to explore his options. And off the back of that, the red hot favourites are the Parramatta Reels because uh, Zach's got a, a great rapport with their assistant coach, Trent Barrett. They were both born and raised in Tamora. They both live in Shell Harbour. Um, and the Parramatta Reels are looking for a strike centre and that is where they would play Zach. Hey, hey Hoops, and just on that, on, on Rhys Walsh, I'm a bit confused on what he's doing. If we can... Roll this tape in here because I don't know what he's doing. Can we roll some some audio f- through the week? Yeah. It's Dobbo's Mail on Triple M. Reese Walsh has signed the biggest deal in the Broncos' history. It isn't signed, but he's agreed there to terms. We go. It isn't there, signed. There you go. So he signed the biggest deal, no, but it, it isn't, isn't signed. signed. So I just got confused. Mm, okay. I was driving around. Can you tell me, no, has he go. signed? No, he hasn't or has signed. It? No, he hasn't so signed. So why'd you say that he signed? I got stumbled up. He hasn't signed. I just came up with that. <laughs> so you got stumbled Don't up. Don't drop the bottom lip at Easter. Let's, let's just go. You could I have mean, caused started... a major accident there. <laughs> Mate, like, I'm imagine the confusion right? of the yeah. Brisbane drivers or the whole oh. of Queensland. You're driving yeah. along the motorway we gonna, and you're like, I thought we were gonna he's signed, he's not. Oh, oh. <laughs> like, you're all over the shop, Dobbo. I thought we were going to have a clean show today. Dobbo, I really I'm driving around, right? And I can't get out of the car till I hear your mail, right? <laughs> it, it, it is, it's gospel, right? It's, it's to the point, right? It's like Greg Inglis will be in the Broncos jersey, all that kind of stuff. I sit there and I wait for it. And then you confuse me. All, and then you said yes and no, all within five seconds. I just got a little bit confused. It's not hard to confuse me too. You, the Reese Walsh situation. Thank you, Gordon, for bringing that up and highlighting. I'm going to start highlighting all your errors oh, as well. Absolutely, you can. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, Reese <laughs> Walsh, as we all know, uh, he he will not be leaving the Brisbane Broncos. He will be there to 2029. And you can, it's been written before. It's been documented. This has been going on for months. And for Reese Walsh to come out and say there's no deal done. Well, there's no. Well, well, I'm no, sorry. He didn't say that. He said I haven't signed anything. Yeah, so what are you going to say about Reese? Ben? So I, what are you going to say? Well, you've heard that. We've already had a discussion about the most on this. Popular player yeah, in Queensland. Wonderful kid. Great very kid. good footballer. Narang Rooster. Does a lot for the game. Is big for the brand. He will be a Brisbane Bronco long term. That... Don't attack him because he just said on his social media, "I haven't mate, signed anything." That was anything. because of an article written he... in the paper, mate. That oh, was and it could have prior... been you too. It, no, it wasn't. This came out. Mate, when uh... I texted him, I thought it was all about you. Hey, yeah. mate. No, it's not. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, it's not. Um, I think it was aimed at Bomber Bedell as well, yeah, wasn't and, it, and, 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 Because oh, he was he was filing from the Caesar's Palace pool Palace. party over in <laughs> Las Vegas. He's over there for the Tim Zoo, it's Sebastian fight. Fundora but fight. We all know that this deal has been agreed upon, Hoops, and and this is this is it might not have been signed. But I like that. So why can't see? This is my point. Why can't Reese say, "Hey guys, on his thing, this is what I'm doing." Well, he can because mate. he hasn't signed anything. He can, but he, he can hasn't signed. So the deal's not done because you know when Greg Inglis is in the Broncos Gordy, jersey and all that kind of. Gordy, the this deal's came not done from within until, the Broncos. The deal's not, but the deal's not done until the deal's done. Well, the board have ratified it. The board saw the deal Hi, and ratified a it. A piece of paper without a signature. Anyway, I, I, I'm it, just saying. If, do you think he's going to go anywhere else? So what? Do, no, I'm I, not I, saying no, no, that. I'm asking you that. Do you think Reese Walsh will be going this anywhere is, else? This is not about that. This is about a player that hasn't signed anything. They can go there and the club can put him in and the club 
can say we've just re-signed him without it being in the paper or well, it was in the any... paper. It went. It, the, the, so it, that means that's not even out. true in the paper. Is that what you're trying to tell? Well, me? I don't Is know. That you, what you're you, just work, you, you work for the, that company. You work with the company where it came from. No, so, I work for Fox. Well. I think that's news limited. Dobbo, no, you're upsetting a lot of the game's biggest stars. Oh. I haven't upset anybody. Yeah. I haven't upset anybody well, on Well, Reese had to clarify yeah. on social media what oh, was going yeah. on. Oh, he had to take was... time to make sure that everybody Hoops. understood his position. Hoops, what's hey, the latest, can I, ask, can I just ask just before we move on, Dobbo? Has he signed it or has those, he? No, no, those hats, the hat that he was wearing on um, yeah. on yeah. Friday the night, arena. have it's they all the, got those? The, what happened was that they've done a deal with R.M. Williams, the Broncos, and yep. R.M. Williams now own a Cobra, uh, the bootmaker, uh, yep, um, okay. Twiggy Forest. He also, it was a yeah. company, that were, and he's putting back. So he owns R.M. Williams. And he also owns a Cobra. So That's when they got hat. their when they got their uh, RM Williams when they went to Vegas, they also said um, the, the the girl who does all the PR with the Broncos, Melissa Mallet, said, "Hey, listen, there's some boys who want some a Cobras." Well, it wasn't just one; it was the whole squad of thirty. So they've all got their arenas, which are, that's the type of a Cobra that's a it good is. Good hat. It's like and, an old ten gallon. And they all wear them now. Bob Catter's weighed in on this and said, mate, because Bob Catter thought everybody thought it was him. He started getting texts saying, what are you sitting in the box? No, it was Reese Walsh in the same hold sort on, of hat. Hold on, hold on, Bob Catter. Bob Catter has, has, has got on Twitter and Instagram and said, Bob hey, Catter nothing. thinks that he looks like Reese Walsh. That will do me. <laughs> Read the social oh, media. Yeah, Bob Catter. Give me a break. Anyway, either way, Bobby the Broncos Catter. now wear these hats as part of their uniform. It's very so yellow what do you stone. think? It's very Does cool. Bob Catter think he looks like I don't like think he Reece. is. I think well, he said that publicly. Anyway. <laughs> Either oh. way, either way, it's a good look. They all like it. Um, it's a cool look. Reno it won't is. wear the hat. Reno well, won't wear the hat. Some people well, can't Reno pull it wear off. the hat. Well, he does. He's not country, mate. He's not oh, country. You know why? Because he'd look, yeah, because he, him and Rip would be like mini me. It'd be <laughs> ripping mini me. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, the Dolphins scored thirty unanswered points to end up winning quite comfortably in the end. That it was a really disappointing performance. Once again, from a Titans side that promises so much, 30 points to 14. They led 10-0 after 13 minutes. They had plenty of opportunity, but now the Titans are the first team in 22 years to concede 28 points in eight straight matches. That is not a good record at all. Gordon, tell us. I know how much you love yep. the Gold Coast Titans. We, we know the owners very well. Um, the Frizzells, the club is a proud club, but they are really struggling at the moment. Yeah, they are. I... I... I saw some really good signs, and as you said, you know, like the first couple of weeks, they were struggling to score points, and, you know, everybody thought when Desi was going to come, you know, they are going to have a little bit more resilience. But uh, yesterday, the old Titans turned up, and they said, look, having Jaden Campbell back uh, and Dave Fafita, like we've, you know, we've hadn't had our full, um, um, our full squad yet, but having them back, I was optimistic that it was going to be a really good performance. And the way we started, there were some real positive signs. And then when... Max Plath did the hip drop tackle. Yeah. I thought, well, here we go, right? There's, a, you know, just into half time, mate, we'll get some more points and 18 points. And I know that sometimes when you're down on confidence, like you need points and you need your scoreboard going, going your way to get that confidence. And then the Dolphins, a typical Wayne Bennett performance, tightened up shop. We started making mistakes. The Titans missed 44 tackles yesterday. Gee whiz. And 11 handling errors. And I know that, you know, Everybody makes mistakes, but that's just not good enough. And in the period where you were supposed to put a lot of pressure on the Dolphins when they were down to 10, uh, sorry, uh, 12 Yeah, when they were down a man, yeah. They played better football than us. They scored tries. That's not – and then – and I reckon Desi would have been filthy. Well, there was that, a, well, I will say footage. this. And I'll, 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 yeah, hoops, there's footage uh, that, of yeah, the sheds after Yeah, they the had game. a whiteboard. They had a whiteboard and they blocked the camera – and De Desi went on one almighty spray. And, 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 and I will get to you, James Graham, shortly, because right. I'm sure you've had and been a part of the Des Hasler sprays. But, Hoops, there is some concern. And as Gordon said, when they went to the left, Brimson went, went to the left. They looked good. They had good yeah. shape. They scored a really good try with Philip Sami. Um, but the concern is that that was 13 minutes. Then they went away from it. They went completely yeah. away from it. And they invited the Dolphins back in. Yeah, it's impossible to sugarcoat it. They're now red-hot favourites for the wooden spoon. They've shown 13 minutes of form all season, and aside from that, uh, they've fallen to pieces and crumbled against opposition that, in all fairness, like the Dolphins will challenge for the eight. Um, but 
they've just been bitterly disappointing so far, the, the Gold Coast the, Titans. I expect yeah. a lot more, Gordy, because of the, of the recruitment of, of Dez. I know how hard he trains his players. Um, I, I know the fundamentals that he likes to set up as the structures of his football side. And this team at the moment, and it was evidenced by Dez's tirade and spray after the game, they well, clearly aren't getting his game plan or his message. Well, well, well last year there was a... There was a joke and Dan Ganeen was having a crack at me because at half time I think they were they always led at half time. Yeah, like but... I think they were first in the competition at leading at you know like um in one of the halves Titans were so so everybody saw the potential and then having Des go there you know like they thought that you know that period what I was talking about Manly where they get bored from you know doing what they do or they don't want to get scrapped they don't want to roll up the sleeves like they're happy to roll them you know just underneath the elbow but they don't want to roll them all the way up and get gritty and you know and just. And just be happy playing tough and making it uncomfortable for the opposition. So I thought with where they were last year, you know, I thought the first five weeks, I thought we're a chance of winning all those five games. Mm. I actually thought that. Yep. And well, have a look where we're at. Yeah, it, was, it, it was the Dolphins last year that um, ran them down in uh, in one of the games. Yeah. It, the, 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 the Titans were up, I think, maybe 22, 24 points. They did. And well, they scored 30, un- 30 unanswered points yesterday. Mm. Yeah, look, look for, for me, this just doesn't add up. I'm with you, Gordon. Like the 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 draw would have got Tell everybody me. on the Gold Coast super excited about the the potential for this season, and you know to be down or to start the season zero and three without really playing any of the contenders it, it is a concern. Next up, it's the Cowboys, the Raiders, both away from home, Manly at home, and then the Warriors away from home. It's a it's a tough month of football coming up. And, you know, f- for me to see Hasler the way he was after the game, look, look, that's that's not even a 10 out of 10. That's a... What's that on that, the scale? That, what's that, what's I, that on Desi's blow-up scale? like <laughs> half-baked. He's... Oh, that's only a five. Oh, he's it? got plenty to go. In. Oh, so that's <laughs> only <laughs> the cupcakes. So that's, that's not the full roast. What's the best no. one, Jammer? Jammer, what's oh, the best spray the you've ever had? Uh, was after the... We, 2013, uh, we lost the playoff game against Newcastle at home. Yeah. And it was bizarre because after the game, everything was pretty good and I, I was quite surprised and just right just get showered up we're going to go back to the Leeds club it's the sort of end of season celebrations whatever it is you know unexpected uh losing in the first week of the finals and got back to the Leeds club and then you know the, we'll go and meet up st- well, well we thought we were just going for a drink which, which we were but so I can just see everybody in this place first what, the theatre at, or where'd you go? No, 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 this was at the Leagues Club, so it wasn't at the training ground. So there's when, no, like, Lazy Susan there? You're not spinning not, not, dumplings not, around or Not anything. yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Des just wanted a quick word with us, and then he gets us all into this room, and obviously by this time, there's, like, a, a good 90 minutes have passed since the end of the game. It, almost two hours, because we've showered, we've we've not done recovery, but we've seen our, you know, our loved ones that were in, in and around, and, you know, everyone's sort of congratulated on the season. But then yeah, and that, we've had the bus ride back from um, from Homebush to to Belmore, and then we get in oh so get into Belmore into the Leagues Club, and then he just absolutely unloaded on us and told us that you know we weren't prepared to bleed for him and for each other today. And I can still remember it's one of the spray, it's one of the the things that you remember because of the the environment that we were in. It wasn't in the immediate aftermath, so. It, that was a pre-planned, like he he thought, and he was uh, it was calculated, yeah. And it did get a response. So when I when I looked at yesterday, I don't know if that was calculated. I don't know if that was just that instant feeling, and it it was reactive to what he'd just seen. I don't know if there was much calculation with it, but what happens when typically when you're on the when the group is on the receiving end of a spray because that's what it looked like because he was in and around all different areas and there was maybe one or two that he went to but I don't know if he was actually singling those people out. It's a collective spray that he gave yesterday. Now, that is designed or what what, what should happen is you sort of get shattered from it but you've got to pick the pieces up and that's where 
It's not Des that picks the pieces up. It's your senior players that get around and get with each other and say, we've got to do something about this here. So this is where the response comes. Des is going to give you the tactical information and give you the, the training methods to go out and execute a game plan. But this is where the leaders of that group come together and say, we're, we're shattered here. We've got, to, we've got to glue this back together. We've got to, we've got to respond to this because what, it, it's never nice being on the receiving end of that, but it can go two ways. And, and if you don't have the leaders to get yourselves back together, it, it, it makes it even worse. Have they got the leaders, Gordon, in that side? Bark here and foreign. And well, I you say have that, to. It, well, no, 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 no. You have to. The AJ Brimsons, the most food awakers, the guys that have played Origin have to. The the oldest statesman in the team, they got ice. Isaac, like he's like he's played at the Roosters. He's won. Liu, yeah. Yeah, mate. So like they've won grand finals. They've got Kieran Foran. They've got enough senior players there that have played enough footy, that have heard enough speeches, have watched great players go through their motions to say, hey, boys, we don't do that. This is where we're going. So what happens is, right, with a coach like Desi, they tell you, right, and some people don't quite get it or uh, I'm not quite sure. The senior players say, no, no, that's what we're doing, right? And that's what happened with Wayne in our day. You know, like you'd see a couple of guys and their eyes would be rolling back or didn't sort of think that we should be playing that style. And Alf or Laz go, hey, boys, shut up. This is what we're doing, right? So that's – so they – they have to do it. Yeah. And someone I, someone has to do it. And also, if Des is telling them in telling them or instructing them to perform a certain way, you know, or, or showing them a certain play from the from the Dolphins. So one of the plays that I was surprised to see the Dolphins score from is when they've got an edge back row playing the ball, the Dolphins, they'll fall into uh three uh three middle forwards. The first middle forward runs across a, like a, a lead line. The second middle forward runs a sweep play out the back, typical of like what a halfback would do. Yep. Runs into the – this is a tri-line play, there, so they're yep. attacking in their good ball. The middle forward comes out the, out the back of the other middle forward and then passes it on to the third middle forward. So they do that every single time. Like a Kafusi plays the ball, and that's exactly what happened. Kafusi plays the ball. He's the edge back rower. You've got three middles all pushing through. Josh Kerr goes over for the try. Now, Des would have been all over that because it's what the, they it's do what, it's what, what the Dolphins do. We've, see, we, do. we've seen Wallace come up with tries. We've seen um, Mark Nichols come up with tries. We've seen nice. Bromwich, Flegler. So they do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm imagining seeing there is Des is – pre-planned and said, this is how we're going to deal with it. Don't you dare let this third middle forward run that line and get over. And it happened. Mm. But there's a process to it. So he would have known who was supposed to be on that person. So I've instructed you to deal with this threat and I've given you the tools to do to deal with it. And you've not done it. So that, that that's where if you if he, Des is in a he's that type of coach where he wants to you know give players clear instruction on what's expected what I'll show you or I'll come up with a plan to stop them scoring from that particular play but then if players have gone out of system and not done it then that's when you get the the spray and then maybe it's those leaders that go maybe this guy knows what he's talking about because if we'd done what he said then maybe they wouldn't have scored off one of their the um, the Dolphins' pet plays. Des hates team scoring off predictable pet plays that they do week in, week out because he designs defensive play, defensive uh, movement patterns and defensive structure to counteract that. Well, he's so meticulous in terms of his preparation. The thing that I find interesting around the form of the Gold Coast Titans at the moment is that all the reports out of the Gold Coast over the summer were that the playing group had really bought in to Dez's arrival. They loved the changes that he'd made to the way they were doing things. Um, they loved his attention to detail. And there was a lot of optimism about the fact that, you know, this could be the season that they're starting to challenge to make the finals. But, look, it's been yeah. a bitterly disappointing yeah. it start has. today. Gordy, I'll come to you on this. Tanner Boyd looks like, at the moment, he's he's right out of form. And we all have seen every time AJ Brimson gets his hands on the ball, he creates something. Now, Campbell came back in last yep. night. He, he he already made a difference at fullback. Absolutely. He's our most so, creative. So is it unreasonable to make four in the seven and bring Brimson to six? No, no, I think Tanner Boyd, right? So, like, he's our halfback, right? So 
there's some things that you have to suck up, right? So we don't have a lot of depth in the seven, right? We you got young Weaver as well, but Weaver, I mean he's mate, still he's coming not too on. Bad, yeah. right? See, but like then they're still learning, right? So they're still like a year away, and Sexton's gone, and Fo- and and Fogarty wanted out, and then he's at the Raiders, right? Yep. So there's certain decisions that um, were made, but for some reason, like Tanner Boyd has to be a seven. You do have Kieran Four in that side, so he's got to probably take more of the reins. And I think AJ Brimson is a centre. Right. I really so if he wants to play rep football, and that's where his ego's at. So being Titans number one or being a Queensland centre, which one do you want? Right. So that's what I'd be saying. A bit like the Zach Lomax situation. Your coach puts you where is best for the team. And if you don't want to do that, well, I wouldn't want to play with you, right? That's that's just me. If someone doesn't want to play, I'd say, coach, just don't pick him. Put him in reserve. Is, is he happy, though? Is well, AJ happy in the centres? Well, I think he is. So everything that he's saying, I think he is a centre. And I think he's great mates with young Campbell. And yeah. I think Campbell is is probably a better option at number one. I think Jaden Campbell is our most creative player. Yesterday when he went across a couple of times, mate, if blokes would have hit a hole on him, like yeah. like they're three, but that's his first game back. He's come back from an injury. Um, I think he played last week for Tweed. So, you know, he's fine. So then he probably hasn't been training at the back. So are they going to be in sync? Probably not. But I think when he and AJ and Fafita or whatever get on an edge and it's going to be a dangerous Proposition for the opposition defence. But I, I think AJ is centre. You, you know what, Gordon? Uh, may, maybe this is the, the other way around where uh, AJ, someone needs to go to him and say, look, I know you want to play centre now and you've got an opportunity to play rep football there, but we need you in the halves. Yep. Like that, yeah, I, 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 think that, I think that could be a pop- – it's not AJ campaigning to play in the halves yes. because he wants his hands on the ball, yeah. ball a little bit more. It could be the fact that this is what the team need from him. Indeed. Because you're going to have to forego your or, because if Billy Slate is watching for centres, you, you're playing in that position week in week out. That's a big tick for for, for Origin selection. Where yep. if he moves into the halves, you know he's not getting those reps in in at the centre position. But yep. perhaps his team needs him to move from the centre, forego those Origin ambitions, and play in the halves and get his hands on the ball a little bit more. Really good point. Yeah, it is either way. Des has will be working overtime. Friday night was a special night in Brisbane for the first time ever. The Cowboys and the Brisbane Broncos played for the late, great Car Webb medal. Um, yeah. Charlie was 42 um, yep. and uh, one of the greats who played for both clubs. And Pat Carrigan won it. But the Broncos were very impressive. 38 points to 12 victors. Their coach recently extended to the 2026. He's got an upgrade, a pay rise and an extension. Kevin Walt was joining us. Happy Easter, Kev. Yeah, happy Easter, everyone. What a great yeah. Sunday it is, eh? <laughs> Unreal, mate. Unreal. How are you feeling? What a real strong win on Friday night. It was super impressive with the calibre of players out that, that regardless of that, they just got the job done. Yeah, they certainly did, Dobbo. Um, yeah, you know, the Cowboys were a bit off with their handling, which uh, some of that was from our kick pressure. And uh, Adam Reynolds had a terrific night with the boot, uh, just you know, placing those uh, high kicks beautifully, uh, allowing us to get through and put some pressure on. So... Yeah, it was a good night for the Broncos, not so good, you know, for the Cows. Hey, Kevy, um, it must have been good, obviously, the Cowboys on top of the table, and it used to be little brother versus big brother, but it's actually big brother versus big brother now. So um, what was the most pleasing thing about that victory? Oh, I think keeping the Cowboys to 12 points, Gordy, you yep. know, um, that, that's a big one for us. They've scored more tries than any other team, you know, in the competition. So they're, they are a handful. Um, and I, I thought... Uh, particularly our middles, defended really well, which enabled our edge to sort of tie in with them. And, yeah, it was a really strong defensive performance and uh, one that we're pretty proud of. We're moving on now already. We've uh, had a training run this morning and done our review and we're into the storm now on, on Thursday night. Kevy, congratulations on the uh, new contract until the end of 2026 and also happy Easter. I wanted to ask you about the influence you touched on it a moment ago of your little general, the number seven, Adam Reynolds. That all-round kicking performance that he produced was so special just how important is Adam's leadership and everything that yeah. he brings to the table in terms of your side oh he's very important Oops. And, you know we did miss him uh, the week before um, particularly you know it's such important uh, these days that you know your last play options and your kicks um, all the teams that we've come up against their back five are really strong for bringing the ball back so it's really important where you land your kicks and then you get your kick chase through to start the set so He's instrumental in that. And a couple of attacking kicks as well. He put in a try for, you know, Katoni and his old mate Oatsy 
um, was big enough himself after being on there only about four or five minutes and picking up his first try in about 30 years. So that was, <laughs> that was great stuff uh, from Renault. With his short his short kicking game is is very good as well. Hey, Kevy, it's Jimmy Graham here. Congratulations on the new deal and the win yesterday evening. Um, obviously, uh, a, a number of tries um, came through the through the boot of Adam Reynolds, but also yep. a few from Dummy Half as well with Tyson Smoothie and uh, Billy Walters sneaking over. Was that a plan going into the game to to look to catch out the 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 markers there for the for the Cowboys, or did that just in, instinctively happen for those two players? Well, a bit of a mixture of both actually, because you know we we have seen. Uh, some other teams, you know, exploit the Cowboys through there. And we thought, um, you know, I was particularly happy with, with Billy and Tyson. They're both there, not, not just their tries, but their work around dummy half. I thought they've been a little bit off the last couple of weeks, but their passing was good. Uh, their decision-making was good in there as well. And they're both fortunate to come up with two tries. We actually asked around the group this morning, when was the last time two hookers scored uh, in a game? I, I, no one could come up with an answer. So I think it was a pretty special moment for both those boys. And, um, they were, you know, Billy's try to get us out of the box and a really strong start. And then when uh, Tyson picked up his try, um, that sort of kicked us away a bit, which was uh, very grateful for that as well. Hey, Kevy, for all the Broncos fans, mate, Reese Reese Walsh, obviously it's good news that he didn't need surgery and pain has. Yeah. Any news on when those two will be coming back? No, uh, we'll still be a few weeks away, um, Gordy. Walsh will be back before pain will. He's a lot tougher than pain, obviously, Reese Walsh. <laughs> um, yeah, he'll be back maybe next week or the week after. So we've got the Dolphins after the storm. Uh, maybe that week is a chance for Reese, but um, pain's still about a month away. Uh, he got a, some knee surgery and just tidied up his knee a bit, so he'll be a bit longer. They're big knees too that he's got, so they take a while to heal. Though. <laughs> hey, Kevy, one thing I noticed was Reese Walsh with that great cowboy hat on. Do you ever have one? Because I reckon if you had a cowboy hat, you'd look like Boss Hog out of the Dukes of Hazzard. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually, I've, actually, I've actually had words with Reese about that hat in my coach's box. It's not allowed, mate. It's banned. Um, <laughs> he, he looks too good in it. Like he, he should be in the movies, uh, Reese. You know, Don't tell him that. We should have left him there, mate. He could have made a career out over there. <laughs> hey, Kevy, oh, the um, the the Selwyn Cobbo break uh, and the chase oh. down from Deard and oh, yeah. look, obviously, you know, it's a very special play, but but it, but it's against you. Like, what what did you make of that? Oh, look, I, you had a chat with Selwyn this morning about it all because uh, we had a pretty good head start on Tommy, but that was pure just Tom Tommy's drive and desire, you know, to make the tackle. And Selwyn, I'm sure, if he had his time. Over again, he said this morning that he thought he had Tommy covered for pace, but then all of a sudden he sort of started running in a bit of quicksand. That, you find that quicksand sometimes after 60 or 70 metres. So, um, yeah, it disappointed uh, result, but a great effort from Tom Deard. And that's that's one for the for the uh, for the archives. That one for Tommy it was a brilliant tackle, uh, in a, a big moment in the game as well. We're a bit fortunate after that we, we, we they lost possession and we managed to score a try, but it was a big moment for the Cowboys and certainly Tommy Deard. And we know what he's like. As a player, he just never gives up. So that was a brilliant tackle. Kev, I mean, the win was the, by far the most impressive of the season, I think. And and you obviously haven't had a slow start. You're two and two. But, you know, was that for you as the coach, you think you've turned the corner? Even though you've got some of your big, big name players out, it, it seemed to me the energy and the commitment over the 80 minutes was the best it's been. Can you pinpoint why it has been a bit slower for you to begin in 2024? I wouldn't say it's so much slower, but we've you know we've got a couple of pretty some pretty good sides, you know, with the Roosters, South. I know that, that, that you know that was a battle for us for, for most of it of the game, and then Penrith. Um, and we've also had I don't like making excuses for our for our guys, but there has been some injuries to certain yeah. players that have disrupted our defensive line. But you know, I, I thought watching Penrith on on Thursday night, I got a uh, a lot out of that game watching them play the Roosters with some of the, you know, with noted Nathan Cleary, uh, Fisher Harris was out, Sorensen was out. So three of their, you know, key players not playing and still they just rolled out Penrith, uh, which is beats every, well, it's beating every team at the moment. So, um, yeah, we had a little chat around that here at the Broncos and making sure, you know, we some of our key players are missing, but you still need to be gritty and be tough in defence and all those things that, um, you know, win your football game. So I thought that was better from us, you know, on Friday night. But still, we've got a, a, a long way to go to be where, where we need to be, particularly without a fence. So, I mean, that's, you know, the great teams like Penrith, um, they defend well. 
over the over the season, not just here and there when they feel like it. So that's a big one for us. Kevy, how are you feeling about the trip to Melbourne? You've obviously had a great rivalry with yeah. the, the Melbourne Storm over the years, and uh, you have at times find, found it hard to find ways to yeah. win. Yeah, well, we put that to bed last year, I believe, in the semi-final up here. Um, it's, it's been about seven or eight years and 16 games or something since the Broncos had beaten the Storm, but that's in the rear vision mirror now. We, we managed to beat them last year. Uh, so we'll go down there confident, but also very respectful of the Storm and, and their home ground, I guess, is uh, outside of Penrith is that, you know, one of the, well, if it's not the toughest, it, it is the toughest ground to play at down there at Amy Park. So, but again, we're all, we're looking forward to it. Um, certainly, you know, the buzz around, you know, training this morning indicates that um, it's a Thursday night game, so we've got a quick turnaround into the Storm and the Storm in Melbourne uh, is a great opportunity for us to really see where we are as a group as well. Yeah, either way, you it was a very, very good win, impressive win in front of a huge crowd. It, it absolutely pelted down with rain in Brisbane uh, uh, just before kickoff. There was still 45,000 there on, yeah. on Good Friday. It, it, it speaks volumes of what Brisbane has done in turning around. Kev, congratulations. I know you don't like talking about yourself, mate. I mean that to get that extension. Uh, you, you inherited the side when you came back as the head coach and they were wooden spooners. And, you know, within three seasons, you got them to a grand final. You, you now sit two and two and a really impressive performance. And, and off the back of some of these players committing long-term, they're committing because they're happy and that they want to be at Brisbane. And, and that's been led by yourself. I know you've got a, a good team around you, but you, you're at the head of the ship. So well done, mate. Go and enjoy your Easter. Yeah, thanks, John um, Yeah, look, it's been a, a good turnaround for us, but I walked past the Cadbury Trophy again this morning. It's still empty. So we need trophies here, Dobbo. That's what it's all about. And uh, that's what we're striving for. So we'll see how we go. And what better way to start her off again with the storm on, on Thursday night? Let's go. Good. Good on you. Thanks so much for giving us some time. Appreciate it, Kevin Walters. That's right. Get away from the chocolate eggs, Billy. You're <laughs> <laughs> See you, Kevin. <laughs>